Wagner Nation. I'm Hershey along with Jeff of the Nebraska Game and Parks Commission and this is your almost weekly video blog, Nebraska Outdoors, your source for everything outdoors related. And today, as you can tell, we're getting ready for the camping season, Jeff. Oh, and nothing could be more important than camping is getting a good cup of coffee. That's right. I mean, folks, when you go camping, there's three things that make it official. One, some place to sleep outside. Two, a campfire. Absolutely. And in the morning, you need to have a good cup of joe, and that's what we're going to talk about here today, because there's good ways to make this stuff. There's also some kind of different ways to make this stuff. We're going to do this real simple, so hopefully you've got something that's palatable. You don't have to chew too much. Well, and I've never had as good a cup of coffee as I've made on the camp, in, in campfire or camp stove at the campsite. And the, the, the pot that we use to make coffee out of, the way we make it, just a little bit unique compared to that push-button stuff we have back at home. Got to have water. Got to have good, clean water. Now, some people will use the filtered stuff. Some will uh, use it right out of the spigot. You've got to start with good, clean water. or Lake water. <laughs> yeah, so, I don't know about that. been a big advocate over the years about this because some people don't like chewing coffee grinds in that cup of joe. So go over a little bit of the differences we have here and why some grinds are a little bit better for camp coffee than others. You want a little bit coarser ground uh, coffee so that it doesn't come through. Here you can see we've got some of the more common instant type coffee that's pretty finely ground and then you have over here uh, a little bit more coarser ground coffee that uh, uh, would probably uh, do a lot better in our in our camp coffee pot. A lot of stores now have kind of the pick your own beans and grind it right there and that's kind of what we did. People, Jeff, will actually use coffee filters in here to help keep more grounds out. Mm -hmm. uh, they actually make this size and shaped uh, filters that uh, I'm sure some of you are familiar with depending on what kind of coffee maker you have at home, but this kind of helps keep those grounds up here and set it down uh, in the coffee and where you're going to pour it out from uh, when it's all said and done. But I like to live dangerously. I like, I get, I like get strong flavor. So the strength not only comes from just how many grounds you add, Jeff, but also how long you, you percolate it or how fast you percolate it out there as well. So how much coffee do you put in your percolator? Well. Uh, Can I do depends. one here and say percolator one more time? Percolator? <laughs> it all percolates down to this, Jeff. <laughs> Just dump it in there. I usually eyeball it, folks. I usually forget the teaspoon. You can use the little breakfast spoon if you want to, but get it in there, spread it out, get it kind of evenly because that water is going to come in all different directions there. One more for, for good luck. <laughs> now, now we're talking. All right. And just a pinch extra. Just, just a pinch, pinch extra. Yep. To add to that, that good luck. Boom. I took put my good clean water here, started my camp stove, as I mentioned before, letting it just get to about that, that boiling state. We're looking for a bubble just so we can start that whole process. Once it just starts to bubble, Carefully we put this. Now don't just toss this in because no, then you're talking hot water here. You don't want to make a big splash. And I close it. And, and now good gonna, things, magic happens and we have coffee. I'm going to start slowly turning it down just a little bit. Almost to a simmer, folks. So it doesn't start boiling. Again, you're percolating. You're, you're not boiling. And now it's just a matter of... Oh. Just well, folks, quick. we're going to have to leave now. We'll come back in just a few minutes once this is uh, percolated. Uh, we got work to do, so uh, we'll sign off for now. As soon as it's ready, we'll be right back. It's percolating. A watch pot doesn't boil, but it percolates, Jeff. <laughs> Triple dog Gary to snort some of this coffee here. <laughs> On camera. Now? Is it ready now? Nope. Oh gosh. Fresh coffee. Fresh coffee. It's been kill I've been smelling this for the last seven or eight minutes now. This has just been tough. Oh gosh. Yes. It smells like coffee a la hunting shack.
Done. One thing to keep in mind, folks, is you've got probably a hotter than average cup of coffee coming out of this thing now since it's been percolating slash boiling. So keep that in mind. Careful with the spillage here. And uh, oh, look at that. Just a beautiful, just a golden brown. Oh, gosh. <sighs> Thanks for pouring me some, by the way. Well, you, we'll serve no coffee before it's time. <laughs> Can you see the steam, folks? Yeah, that's, that's hot. <laughs> that, that, that proves that you're out uh, camping. On a nice it's frosty early. morning, that would just fill up the entire camp. And as Jeff mentioned, contents may be very hot. Perfect, <sighs> huh? This, for this video. Wouldn't well, know. I didn't get any. <laughs> you know, folks. Uh, coffee cups over the years have changed, and for us campers and outdoors folks who like to be out in the tall and uncut, keeping a cup of coffee warm for a period of a couple hours has always been a challenge. But today, there's so many different types of thermoses and coffee cups. Uh, the technology has really skyrocketed, and, and there's a lot of things going out there now that allow us to keep a cup of coffee warm uh, throughout the entire duck hunt, or turkey hunt, or uh, lounging around the campsite. Now, of the different technologies that are out there, some of these different cups, I don't know what they call them, double vacuum sealed or whatever. I call mine shiny. There you go. Shiny silver cups uh, are kind of the rage, these shiny silver cups. Now, some of these shiny silver cups can cost you a lot of money, and some of them can cost you hardly uh, anything, depending on uh, brands and where you buy it. What we're going to find out is, are all things created equal? These two cups look the same. They have different names on them. Uh, they came from different stores, and one cost about 20 bucks less than the other one. Yeah, yeah. And so the idea is, will the more inexpensive cup keep coffee as warm over a longer period of time as the the uh, least expensive cup? Let's do it. Get your All lid right. off. Now. Here goes the scientific fill. Put them side by side. He's here. been trained to do this, folks. This is hot coffee Come on. scientifically up, being poured. This is a closed setting. Don't do this at home. You have purple Kool-Aid in this? <laughs> I saw lipstick on yours, so I don't want to talk about it. All right. Now, we have to take temperature reading. So we've got our handy dander thermometer. that goes up to about 400... 400 degrees Fahrenheit. Degrees Fahrenheit. If we break this one, we'll buy another. But now we're getting closer to 175, 80, 85, 90. 190 degrees is where it's kind of starting. 190? 190 is where it's bottoming out at. That's pretty hot. That's pretty hot. That's a lot. Now keep that in mind when you're pouring that camp coffee. 190 degrees. All right. Okay. That's the official temperature. 190 degrees. Here we go. The ceiling. And same time, go. All right. They are in. Coffee is being, heat is being lost at a rapid rate, and we're going to determine, we'll be back in an hour, and we're going to determine in an hour what temperature loss we've had. Stop touching yours. So I just tried to keep the friction on the outside, so it's got to stay warm. Now, <clears throat> we're very busy guys, we've got a lot of stuff to do here, so we're going to take a break, and in about an hour we'll get some work done and come back and uh, get the results. seven times. Go fish. All right, ready? Ready? The key is getting underneath it. Oh, <laughs> miserable. <laughs> miserable. 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 Ah! Oh. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. Oh. Okay. And then you do, oh, that didn't work worth a darn.
All right, one last check of the coffee here, folks, because we're dropping below that that good temperature of uh, at least 120 degrees. We're coming over the, the five hour mark. In fact, we're approaching the, the five and a half hour mark. I'm gonna take one last reading right here. In fact, you can see, I don't know if you can see that real well, five hours, 22 minutes is what we're gonna stop her at. Give it a go, one last check. 117.5 degrees for those that wanna get technical. We go to our last one. It's not moving at all. So five and a half hours later, almost five and a half hours later, and these things are still well above 100 degrees. Let's just give it one last true test here. Hmm. That's still do on a cold morning on the duck boat or on the fishing pond. For more information, as always, you can go to outdoornebraska.org. And don't forget, challenge yourself and your friends with the Nebraska Outdoor You program at OutdoorU.org. And you can stream our radio program live every Thursday evening, 6 Central Time, at KFORNow.com. And don't forget, whatever you do, to join us next week as we talk more things outdoors right here on Nebraska Outdoors.